works on it. It's interesting, you can compare the didactic to the dialectic. The didactic is always contrast. See, God says, blessing, cursing. Obey me, you're blessed. Disobey me, you're cursed. There's black and white, right and wrong, light and dark, sheep and goats. There's, always, there's no middle ground. On the day of judgment, God's not confused. You know, he's not going to say, well, park over there for a while and I'll get back to you. He knows. See? And so there's a knowing. There's a suredness in the didactic structure. But in the dialectic, it's always finding what's similar. And you'll see this in the garden with Eve. She's finding that tree she's looking at is similar to the other trees. She's no longer contrasting. She's finding what is in common. You've heard about common cause. The people who are focusing on common cause, I call them common causes. They have sacrificed their identity that God has given them because they want to get along with the village. They've decided that human relationship is more important than truth. Now, I'm not speaking against relationship. In fact, God said it is good, it is good, it is good, and then He said it is not good, and therein lies relationship. It's not good that man be alone. Now, He created Eve. He didn't create Steve, and He didn't create the group. Because nowhere in the Word of God do you find God moving away from a didactic, accountability to higher authority way of thinking. And so even when Eve was created, the desire of her heart was to her husband, Adam was to rule, and eventually children obey their parents and the Lord. That's strictly didactic. Uh, well, that structure is called, the, the leader is called a patriarch. It's a patriarchal system. But in the middle is referred to as a matriarchal system. Now, that's the mother's heart. Nothing wrong with a mother's heart, but you can't rule a nation with a mother's heart because the mother is always saying, children, can't you put aside your differences? Let's have a little peace around the house. The mother wants the siblings to get along. Uh, that doesn't mean that the mother isn't going to support a patriarch, but women cannot produce a patriarch. You can send women to war, but women do not go to war. Men go to war. Now, just think it through. Now, the UN did. Not intentions of cause war in 1951. They're focusing on the women. They're not focusing on the men. Uh, Adam didn't focus on Adam. He focused, excuse me, Satan didn't focus on Adam. He focused on Eve. And so he went after the feelings, the relationship part. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with a mother's, a mother's heart. Uh, the, the wife brings justice. The husbands bring law. Law's harsh. Justice doesn't defy law. It brings warmth and compassion and understanding to that law. You notice that society looks at justice and sacrifices law in doing that. Well, that's why Lot's wife turned around and looked back. She left basically her power base. And uh, if you no longer have law as your foundation but relationship, well, you'll end up with this third stage called heresiaric. You call yourself a facilitator. Social engineers would refer to you as a heresiary. You're going to practice heresy on everybody who comes in the room. See, we live in a rapidly changing world, and so we must all practice change. Truth is just relative. It's not lasting. And so you need to get over the fact that, you know, two plus two isn't four. It could be five or six or whatever is relevant uh, for the day. Well, let me back up a minute to the matriarch. Uh, you know, the, the phrase, men get in touch with their feminine side. If a man gets in touch with his feminine side, what you have found is a pervert. There is no feminine side in a man. And if you focus on getting men to find their feminine side, what you'll do is you'll destroy the patriarch. And that's quite convenient because if you do that, then you won't have war anymore. Then nobody is concerned about a position. Isn't it interesting that God said, you know, when Jesus was confronted by the devil... He, uh, the, Satan offered Jesus the, king, the, the, the kingdoms of the world, or man. And Jesus didn't challenge him. But you have to understand the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So your possession, your property, is what God has given you. And the most sacred of property is your conscience. I don't know if you ever read Madison. He wrote a, a little treatise on this. Uh, Dr. Phil Wirtz, uh, when we were in Rock Rapids, South Carolina, he... Uh, uh, did a presentation on the conscience, uh, excellent presentation, and stated that, see, God has given us a portion. He's given us, if you have anything left, if everything else is taken, it's your conscience. Jeremiah lost his home. You know, when the, when the uh, Persians were leaving and, and the Babylonians were coming in, 
he uh, was leaving town, and the king captured him, threw him in a pit. Jeremiah just said, send me home. Put me under house arrest. Just leave me alone. And the king said, no, you're going to sit in the pit. When he says, well, I'm going to die here. And the king says, if this is the last piece of bread in the country, you're going to get it. Well, then he's dragged off to Babylon. He, so not only did he lose his portion, his home, he lost his portion, his nation. And you'll find later on his response in all of this. He says, you are my portion. See, not, not once in all of his experience did he abandon the position that God had given him. Well, Satan wants to talk us out of that position. He can't take it from us, but he can talk us out of it. And that's what this whole thing, this heresy art process is, is to destroy the property that God has given us. And the, and the most important property is your soul. Well, the language, foundational to change, foundational to contracts, foundational to position. The didactic, traditional, patriarchic languages is a not. You cannot have property without this language. You cannot have children without this language. Uh, you, you can't even do math without this language. Two plus two is four cannot be any other number. This is my child and not your child. If you don't say not, then it's the village's child. The UN says our children because they've talked us out of the negative language. You come in a room, you make a statement like cannot, must not, thou shalt not, and they'll just say don't be so negative, and you'll drop the thou shalt not out, and you just gave up your property because, see, it's your property only when you say this is my property and not your property. And so, in fact, we know the garden was God's property because he told Adam and Eve, uh, he put a thou shalt not in the garden. You always tell the highest authority because they're the one who comes in and says, not. You know, you, you knew who the parents were of children because if the children are misbehaving and a set of parents came over and grabbed one child and said, you can't do that, pretty good odds. That is that child's parent. Those, those parents are the ones who give that child identity, restraints, limits, and measures. And so is and not is foundational to a patriarchic way of thinking. The scenario of the home, you tell your child they can't go out, or as a child you've been told you can't go out, your heart's desire is to go outdoors, that's where life lies, and the parent says, no, you can't do it. Now, if you stop right there, you have two choices. You either obey or you disobey. Now, if you disobey, you're going to be punished. If you obey, uh, you're going to be blessed. Of course, you're not going to be happy about it because you didn't get to do what you wanted to do. So the, the only option we have is to go into discourse, get into dialogue with the contract maker you know and so if you can get the contract maker to renegotiate the contract then there's a good chance that you might be able to go out and do what you want to do so we all did this with one word why see the UN started out with the word cry they call it the magic cry you uh, take your child to the restaurant one year old and they start crying and they grab a hold of something first of all stick it in their mouth you know that's not good so you pull it out and they start crying and everybody in the restaurants looking at you so you find something to stick back in their mouth, and guess what? The cry worked, didn't it? But now, it's, uh, the child isn't asking why to get more information from you to justify why they shouldn't go out. Uh, they're getting you into discourse, into dialogue, because if they can get you to say, well, this is my position, and they then go, well, this is my position, you know what we've just pr produced is equality. Now the child is equal with a parent. And I'm not saying we don't dialogue with our children, but there are times you know what is right and what is wrong. And so you simply say, you stop this dialogue, this challenging of authority with this phrase, because I said so. Now, if you look at grammar, it actually means I caused to be. I created this law. And you are therefore accountable to obey the law. I'm the creator and you're the created. And what you have just experienced as a child, if you've been through this, is the very structure that God communicates to us through. And so, very important with contracts. Don't leave the thou shalt not out. That's that negative language. That's the language of your conscience. Did your conscience ever show up and you just get all tickled and fuzzy inside? No. You, yourself was going some direction and the conscience kicks in and says, cannot, must not, thou shalt not. You try to dialogue with your conscience, by the way. Uh, it doesn't work. What you do is you dialogue with yourself. See, if you can dialogue with yourself, there's more than one of me. There's I, me, and myself. So I can dialogue with myself and justify why I don't have to do what I've just been told to do. Because I don't feel like doing it. And if I use my head, then I can justify to myself that I'm okay. They're not okay. They just don't know the rest of the story. Well, the language follows this. Cannot, we go why to get higher authority into 